So are you planning a trip to the Amish? What are some things you might want to keep in mind? I'm going to tell you about five tips today to help you get the most out of your visit. My name is Eric Wester. I'm not Amish, but I've visited dozens of Amish communities around the country. I've lived with the Amish before. I run the Amish America website at AmishAmerica.com. First tip, if you're visiting the Amish, visit the Amish on their own turf. There are a lot of things you can do when you visit one of the larger Amish communities like Lancaster County, the Shipshawana area in Northern Indiana, uh, Holmes County, Ohio. And a lot of the larger places like that definitely have a tourist industry that's kind of built up around them. So they've got restaurants, they've got buggy rides, they may have like a farm visit. Um, different tours, theaters, those kinds of things. Definitely nothing wrong with that, um, especially the restaurants. <laughs> but, uh, but a lot of people tell me they want to meet the Amish kind of on their own turf. And there's actually a really good way to do this that anyone can do. And uh, that's pretty simple. It's actually to visit the Amish at their businesses. The Amish are not just farmers anymore. And many, you know, most Amish communities have some kind of business there. And some of them have many businesses. There's furniture shops, variety stores, bulk food stores, there's bakeries, uh, quilt shops. And most of these businesses welcome outside visitors. I mean, that's part of how they make a living. You have certain businesses that cater more to the Amish. Like if you have, for example, a buggy shop, uh, most of the business is gonna be going to other Amish. But, you know, even in the Amish, like variety stores, you can, you can go to those. There's nothing against that. And even the farmers have their own farm stands in many cases where they might sell produce uh, by the roadside or, you know, you drive down the lane of the farm and you uh, buy it off the front porch <laughs> from whoever happens to be there, whether that's the mom of the house or one of the children. These are a great way to kind of meet the Amish, you know, in their place of business. And, you know, they usually have some pretty interesting things that they're selling. Now, they've got a busy store. They're not going to have the time to talk to you necessarily. And in some places, people are just not talkative. <laughs> so they're not all going to be talkative, but some of them will be. You can learn a little bit about the community, strike up a conversation. And it's usually a good idea to buy something when you're there. I mean, you know, you can buy some pair of socks or some canned goods or whatever, uh, you'll have something to remember the visit by as well. So in other words, that's a great entry point to be able to meet Amish people. You still need to you know, be respectful, obviously, when you go there, and I'll, I'll talk about that uh, some more in the next points, but um, it's a great pathway to having more contact with actual Amish people. So number two, relax and treat Amish people like people. Kind of hand in hand with the first point, you don't have to act in some weird, stiff, stilted manner around Amish people. I think some people go to Amish communities and they're very concerned that they may do something or say something wrong and might offend the Amish, right? And I think that kind of, I don't know, I think that kind of misreads uh, the general character of Amish people. They're, they're not us, but it's not like they're super easy to offend, you know, as long as you're behaving in a good way. Uh, they're not that uptight about things as people maybe imagine. There is something to keep in mind, which I'll talk about, you know, later on this list. But in general, I would recommend just relax. And I remember the first time I met an Amish uh, person, I did behave in kind of a stiff and awkward manner, I think, to say the least. It was just a housewife in, in Illinois when I was selling books door to door, actually, and I had hadn't visited any Amish homes. So this was really the kind of the first Amish person I had spoken with. I think I said something dumb. I, th I think I said something like, hey, so is this Amish country or just something really <laughs> kind of stupid, but stupid sounding. I didn't really know how to relate, you know, quote unquote, to this person who seemed, suddenly seemed so exotic to me. You know, I th always think back to that time and, and sort of like cringe or laugh at myself a little bit because knowing now kind of what I know, I probably didn't, Put her at ease with my with my dumb question or whatever. So, but I wasn't I wasn't there for very very long. So, so I, I I soon after left and then started to figure things out eventually once I visited more Amish families in that uh, in that job and uh, actually turned out pretty well. Yeah. So I think some people visit with the idea they have to watch every single thing they say or you know not talk about technology or you know just really worry about offending someone. Um, you know, Amish have opinions. Amish people are 
curious about things. They may be curious about the way you live. Some of them are interested in the news and what's going on. Some of them are interested in sports, some of the, the men in particular. You know, and again, I'm generalizing here. There are going to be some people that are more uh, cold or standoffish, for lack of a better word. Generally, I just kind of, I just assume people are going to be friendly. And uh, Amish have a sense of humor as well. I mean, so don't be afraid, you know, to be funny. <laughs> of course, in wholesome ways. So again, it doesn't mean don't be respectful, but the point is just to relax and kind of be yourself and don't put the Amish on a pedestal or treat them like they're some you know, different kind of humans than the rest of us. I mean, they're humans too. Treat them like people. And, uh, you know, I think that's my best advice on that. By the way, if you're liking this video, uh, do me a favor, just hit like. That'll give this video a little boost. Appreciate it. Number three, dress accordingly. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about going out and buying Amish trousers and, you know, getting a you know, handmade dress and wearing a, a head covering or a hat. You know, you don't need to mimic the Amish in some weird way to make them feel more comfortable or something. I would say that, you know, even though you may be visiting in summertime when it's hot, it may not be a bad idea to dress a little bit more formally. And that doesn't mean wearing a suit or just, you know, everything. You can wear normal clothes. The idea here is maybe show a little less skin. Because I think non-Amish people don't realize the way how, I think, revealing certain clothing can be or can seem to a non-Amish person. And uh, I actually noticed this, like when I was like living for longer periods of time with Amish friends and I would be kind of just in their company for, you know, for weeks, you know, right? And I would see non-Amish people in a, on a limited basis. But then I would maybe go to some gas station or something like that. And uh, it would even kind of shock me the kind of the things people would wear, right? It kind of even got my attention because I was just so used to the way the Amish dress, which is pretty, well covered, right? Again, I'm not saying like just, you know, dress head to toe in super formal clothes and everything. I mean, you can roll up your sleeves. I mean, it's not like you have to, uh, you have to be totally, you know, covered up, but keep in mind that typical English, in other words, non-Amish clothing tends to be more revealing than what Amish are used to seeing in their communities. So what might not seem immodest to us may appear that way to an Amish person. I also want to say this, like Amish people are used to seeing non-Amish people, especially in like the larger Amish communities and more progressive places, the Amish who have businesses that deal with English people a lot. They're quite used to it, okay? Because that's just the nature of things. No one's ever going to say anything to you, but it's just something that might show a little more respect, you may actually find yourself more comfortable if you wear something that's a little more formal or less revealing. Number four, important to keep in mind, Sunday is not a shopping day, even in non-Amish places in some, in some communities. You probably have heard that the Amish don't do business or work on Sundays. That's one of the most hard and fast rules that you'll be able to find across the board in in the Amish world. A lot of things the Amish do, there can be little tweaks and exceptions, and you may see one community that's a little different from everybody else that do something a little bit differently. But um, this is one that's pretty hard and fast across all the Amish groups from the most conservative to the most progressive. Another thing that to keep in mind is that in some places, the non-Amish businesses will also be closed on Sunday. For example, Berlin, Ohio, basically shuts down on Sundays. In other words, a lot of the other businesses kind of follow sort of an Amish schedule. In these Amish communities, a lot of the non-Amish people that live there are also, you know, are also Christian. Some of them have similar belief systems, even though they're not Amish, they may be Mennonites. So things like, you know, the chain stores, the fast food, the McDonald's, that's going to be open. But generally not a great day to do a lot of shopping. Another little note is that on Sunday, you should expect to see more and maybe different activity from the Amish. So obviously you're not gonna have the farmers in their fields and uh, people plugging away at work. You are apt to see more buggies on the road and that would be from Amish traveling to and from church. Okay, buggies and also foot traffic in going visiting, which is a popular thing to do. Uh, for the Amish on Sunday after church, 
dropping in on other you know, family members, other people in the community. And then of course the youth traffic, you know, the youth have their youth groups in the evening. They will be on the roads going out with their, with their buddies and friends, going to the youth singing, some going on dates. Number five, be careful on the road. You know, if you monitor the kind of news about the Amish, you become pretty aware of how many accidents seem to happen between cars and buggies. If you're not used to driving around buggies, it can be kind of surprising how quickly you come up on a buggy when you're doing, you know, even if you're doing the speed limit. If you're doing 45 miles an hour and the buggy is doing eight, you will be right up on that buggy faster than you expect. So I think, you know, driving in Amish country means you know, you need to take your speed down a notch, try to stay a little bit more alert. You know, again, for people on the road, uh, you know, in buggies or people walking on the roadside, that can be pretty common. Uh, there have been some tragic accidents where children have run out into the road. Just something to kind of be aware of when you're passing even people on the side of the road, give them enough space. So children walking to school, okay, that's something that's going to be, you know, in the morning around 8 a.m. or so, and then walking back from school in the afternoon around 3, okay, just something to be aware of on the road, walking on their scooters, on their bicycles. Some of the Amish children will wear safety clothing in some of the more progressive communities. They've, in particular, they've sort of accepted that, especially in places like Holmes County, Ohio, Lancaster County. You've got a lot of hills, a lot of curves. You can come, especially if you come over a hill, you know, there could be a buggy that had just gone over the crest and sitting you know, just descending on the other side. And you don't see it when you're, you know, accelerating over the top, but then you suddenly come up on it and then it could be too late. So really be careful in those situations. Sun blinding you. Sometimes a horse can be startled and bolt. Now that doesn't typically happen. The horses are generally pretty well conditioned to be on the roads, at least they should be. Maybe they're not always, but that's kind of that's kind of on the Amish to get a hold of. Also, when you do pass a buggy, try not to cut it off, but give it a wide enough berth when you uh, come, you know, come back into the lane. But probably more importantly, you should be aware of other automobiles on the roads. Some drivers are not very careful about how they pass or how they drive around Amish. Especially in these places where you've got curves and you've got the double yellow line and you can have a buggy going around a curve or you know in a, in a no passing zone and it can back up car traffic. It goes without saying don't pass on blind curves. You may see people doing this regardless, but people take that risk, okay? So just something to be aware of. People tend to get pretty impatient. I don't want to blame it on the locals, but it's usually more the locals that are <laughs> that way. How do I know they tend to, you know, locals tend to be the ones that are involved in these accidents. Funny enough, I don't know if I've ever read uh, a, an accident re report where a tourist actually caused uh, an accident. I'm sure it's happened, but the majority of them tend to be people that live locally. You know, some people just get frustrated driving around the Amish, you know, because it slows you down. And, you know, the Amish don't feel great about that. I've talked to Amish about, you know, they don't like to be blocking traffic and, you know, they'll try to get over as much as they can. A lot of them, sometimes there's just nothing you can do about it, especially going uphill. One of those hill situations, like in Holmes County, I mean, you see this all the time there. You, you got the horse, you know, it's been going up a really big hill and uh, there's no nitro button really that, that the driver can hit to get the horse to fly up to the top for you. It's, you know, it can slow down pretty slow to a clip-clop pace. You know, in those cases, you just gotta drop it down to three, four, five miles an hour and clip-clop along, uh, you know, so to speak, until it's clear to pass. You may have to wait for a long time, before, you know, if you get stuck behind someone, but you know, that's part of the charm of visiting an Amish community. What can I say? <laughs> People often wonder about whether they can stay with the Amish. I get a lot of comments and questions about that. It's possible, right? I always suggest that, you know, the best way to go is to make friends first and then go from there. You know, it's like, I think we kind of expect sort of an instant solution to things like, uh, you know, where's the program I can pay for or the, uh, you know, the experience I can sign up for where I live with an Amish family for a week, right? It's not always that simple and in this case it's it's kind of about making friends first then that's something that could naturally evolve from from that that's usually what i recommend there are actually some places we can stay on an amish farm or like rent from the amish and there are a number of those in lancaster county there's at least a dozen of those there's a website 
It's called AmishFarmstay.com, and I'll put a link to that in the description. That's not like you're living with the Amish necessarily, waking up, you know, and eating breakfast with them, and, and you know, because I think that's what people tend to want to do uh, when they ask that question. But I think that can be a nice sort of alternative where you actually are living sort of around the Amish, and I think in some of the cases you actually do interact with the Amish uh, hosts or the Amish owners of the property. So you can check that out, but I always want to recommend if you want to actually live with the Amish, it's good to, you know, again, make friends first. And I did a couple videos about that. I've got one on the best things about living with the Amish. And then I've got one on the five hardest things about living with the Amish. That's not a complaint video. That is more about how, you know, as a non-Amish person, what are the, some of the challenges and adaptations you make when you stay with Amish. Hit subscribe to be in the loop for more videos. I do two videos per week. What other tips would you add to this? You know, feel free to throw those in the comments. I, I would love to hear any other ideas that, that you guys have. Thanks, I will talk to you next time.